Good evening everyone, welcome to Frame Data Part 2. This is the second part in a two-part series where I uh, explain the basic uh, mechanics of frame data. I'm going to link the first part of this video, which I made quite a while back at this point, in the description. If you haven't seen that already, I really recommend you check it out first because it is important to at least have a loose grasp of the concepts I bring up in that video to be able to uh, use this video uh, correctly. So in that video, the first video, we talked about how uh, frames function in a mechanical sense and sort of what they are in concept. And in this video, I want to talk about applied frame data. And I specifically want to try and explain the concept of block punishment and how that works. So if you haven't quite wrapped your head around how frame data in terms of minus frames on block and plus frames on hit and so on work, then uh, I hope that this video is really going to help you. I'm just going to recap what we learned in the first video real quick here so that I, uh, it, we're in the sort of right frame of mind going forward. Uh, we learned in the first video that frames are a unit for measuring time and that one frame is the equivalent of one sixtieth of one second in real world time. We also learned that that is a very useful way of measuring time in this game because Tekken runs at a fixed frame rate of 60 frames per second. That means that everything that happens in Tekken is always going to be accurately and precisely measurable in frames. So it's a very good unit for measuring time in this game. I want to mention before we go into uh, specifics that uh, it might seem very daunting uh, to uh, memorize all this frame data when you're new to the concept. Uh, but it, you'll actually learn as you get into frame data that you don't have to memorize the frames of every single move in the entire game because there are uh, really strong overarching trends in frame data. So for example, the fastest move that any character has used to uh, has access to normally is going to be exactly 10 frames uh, to come out. Uh, a fast mid poke is going to exist somewhere in the region between uh, 12 and, uh, th and 14 frames. You're going to start finding your fastest launchers at like 14 frames and up, and then you know a fast low poke uh, exists somewhere in the region of like 16 impact frames. And so when you've learned all of these overarching trends, it actually becomes more an issue of remembering the exceptions to the rule. So for example, Bob has a hop kick but it's not 15 frames like a normal hop kick like Miguel's hop kick it is actually quite a bit slower and so you remember that it becomes much more easy to remember you know that Bob has a slow hop kick than trying to remember you know the specific frame data of every single hop kick in the game because they're kind of universal in, in many many ways okay now that that's out of the way I want to bring up a concrete example and I want to try and explain the concept of uh, plus frames on hit and uh, minus frames on block so uh, when I do a, let's use down forward one from uh, Miguel. This is a 13 frame move. What that means is that when I press down forward one on my controller, it takes 13 frames, so 13 sixtieths of one second for the attack to uh, impact the opponent's hitbox. And then two things can happen. The attack can get blocked like it's, it's being right now, or it can uh, hit the opponent when it doesn't get blocked. Depending on uh, whether or not it hits or gets blocked, we've uh, now we're now in one of two situations. When Miguel's uh, down for one hits the opponent, he has five frames of advantage. He is at plus five. So what does that mean? Let's let's show it real quickly. So um, uh, let's uh, allow the attack to hit Raven, and I want you to look at Miguel and look at Raven. Uh, Miguel goes into his attack animation, he hits his opponent, but then after the attack hits, it takes him a short while to sort of stand back up into his normal stance. You see that? And during that little time frame where he's standing back up, uh, he obviously can't do any sort of other attack or take any other kind of action. He's locked into that recovery animation. If you look at Raven, she gets hit and she, you know, puts her head down and then it takes a short while for her to recover back to her normal standing animation. And during that recovery animation, she is completely unable to take any other kind of action. And so when we're talking about minus frames and plus frames on block, we are comparing the time it takes for the two characters to come back to their normal state where they can take the next action, and we're comparing how fast it happens. So. In the case of Miguel hitting with his down forward one, he is going to go back to his normal stance where he's able to do another thing, like another attack, five frames faster. So five sixtieths of one second faster than Raven. 
uh, meaning that if Miguel does this attack, hits with it, and then immediately does another one, it's effectively going to come out five frames faster than it would normally. It doesn't actually uh, come out faster. It comes out relatively faster, relative to how fast Raven can take any kind of action in terms of attacking or moving. So if this attack is normally 13 frames to come out and I hit with it and then immediately do another one, effectively the second one is coming out at eight. Uh, impact frames because it's the 13 impact frames minus the uh, p the five plus frames that I have on block so it's 13 minus five it's just uh, very very basic uh, mathematics if you can even call it mathematics subtraction uh, so yeah that basically means that when I hit with an attack like down forward one it's almost as if all of Miguel's moves are sort of boosted and they're now a little bit faster than they would normally be and that means that he has a tremendous opportunity for continuing offense and when we're talking about opening up offense with pokes in Tekken, this is what we're referring to. We're referring to looking for a hit with a fast move like this. And even though the attack itself doesn't do a lot of damage or create any kind of huge, um, you know, combo or anything, it can put us at an advantage. That means that now it is very, very likely that our next attack is uh, also going to be able to come out and not get interrupted. And so we can continue attacking. And then eventually we get blocked and then something else happened. And now I want to go into the, in my opinion, more important part, which is minus frames on block. So we're going to put uh, Raven back in a state where she's going to be uh, blocking. Uh, okay, uh, over here, yeah. So when the attack down for one gets blocked and we compare these two recovery animations again, we find that this time the one who recovers fastest is actually not Miguel. It's Raven, and Raven recovers two frames faster than Miguel. This is uh, so we refer to this downward one as being minus two on block. Now it's the opponent that gets the slight advantage, meaning that if I'm going to keep on attacking uh, with this move after getting blocked, it is actually effectively coming out at 15 frames, not 13 frames. Now it is relative to Raven actually becoming uh, slower, and this means that uh, if Raven attacks with anything that is faster than that, she's going to be able to uh, interrupt me, and she's even going to be able to counter hit me meaning that when you get a, a move uh, blocked in Tekken it is usually a good idea to not keep on attacking uh, and actually go back on the defensive and then and then there are many many exceptions to this rule but that's uh, that's later down the line in terms of explaining uh, that so yeah uh, now We've uh, understood the basic concept of plus frames on hit and minus frames on block, and this is going to segue into my discussion on uh, the concept of uh, block punishment. And this is really the important part that I want to bring up in this video. Um, sometimes when uh, I get an attack blocked, the recovery animation is really, really long. Uh, so in the ter in terms of like this downward one, we said that you know Miguel is at minus two, so Raven has a a, a two frame advantage. Um, but if we take another example, if for example we take the uh, move down forward two one from Miguel, you can see that if you look at him, it actually takes him a lot longer when I do down forward two one for Miguel to go back to his normal stance because he swings his arm way back around his head and then he turns back around and it takes a lot longer. But if you look at Raven, she actually just blocks normally and then go back, goes back to her normal stance a lot quicker. This move uh, has more than minus 10, of, uh, uh, minus 10 frames of relative disadvantage, right? So this becomes super important because of one specific reason. And the reason is that when I am in this recovery animation, the recovery animation of any move with uh, my character, I am completely unable to block attacks. When you are in a recovery animation, so when you've done an attack like this and Miguel is going back to his normal stance, during that window until he gets back to his normal stance, he cannot block any attacks. And if the window is 10 frames or bigger, and we discussed previously that uh, you know uh, normal characters in Tekken have attacks that usually are 10 frames at the fastest, that means that uh, Raven can use an attack here that is fast enough that it's going to uh, hit Miguel before he goes back to his normal uh, stance and is able to guard again. Uh, meaning that the attack, if uh, Raven does it properly, is going to be completely guaranteed. It's guaranteed going to hit. It's impossible for Miguel to block. This is what's referred to as a block punish. 
that's the basic concept of a block punish. In uh, the case of Miguel's downford uh, to one, it is actually launch punishable. And what we say, what we mean when we say launch punishable, is just that the window is actually so big that Raven can actually get a launcher. Like in her case, I guess uh, down for two would be a good example, and then actually launch Miguel uh, and get a full combo, punishing with a launcher. So that is like the basic concept of a block punish. And so this is the reason why if you're not using block punishment already and you haven't understood these concepts, you're going to get beaten very, very easily by an opponent that does. Because if you're just using, you know, a move like this, looking for a launch, looking because you really like to combo your opponent because it does a lot of damage and it feels fun, your opponent just blocks it and then they know that I have a, an opportunity here where I can do a guaranteed huge amounts of damage to my opponent. If I just sit back and wait and block like this, he's going to do another attack like that again and then I get more guaranteed damage and so I become basically like a, a, a wall and my opponent's just going to run into that wall and destroy themselves. Um, it's also important to understand that a lot of moves in Tekken are balanced around the fact that they are punishable and block. And what I mean is that, for example, a hop kick in Tekken leads to a high damage combo when it connects. So it's very, very good. So in order to make the hop kick balanced, to make it so that it's not too powerful, what they do is that they make the hop kick punishable on block, meaning that if I apply this, if I gamble on this hop kick when it's uh, not going to connect and my opponent blocks it, he can get guaranteed damage. And so that scales down the relative power of a move like a hop kick and makes it a balanced move. Uh, so that is the uh, basic concept around uh, plus frames on hit, minus frames on block, and block punishment in Tekken. And now that you've understood that, you can go to a character sheet and look at uh, the main three things you're looking for is impact frames of a move, uh, plus frames on hit, and minus frames on block. That's basically what you want to know. And it's also important to know that any move in the game that is minus 10 on block or more can be punished by your opponent uh, and every single character in the game has a 10 frame block punisher so uh, if you're playing against an opponent who understands this and who is alert and has uh, you know uh, trained themselves to punish correctly you're going to eat guaranteed damage when you get uh, a move like that blocked all right is that uh basically what i want to talk about in this video is there anything else we need to bring up well there's one concept that i'm going to mention here quickly that i think uh, is important because it pertains to this some moves in the game are not minus uh on block and plus on hit like a normal move some moves for example back three from miguel here are actually plus on block. This is rare, but it, 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 it's extremely powerful. So again, if we look at the recovery animations of the two characters here, you can look at Miguel, he goes back to his normal stance quite fast, but when he's in that stance, you can see that uh, Raven is still railing from the weight of this move. She's still in her recovery animation. This means that there are some moves in this game that if you get them blocked because the attack was kind of like heavy and put your opponent in this very slow recovery animation, you actually get advantage from getting the move blocked. Uh, meaning that the move is basically a win-win as long as it connects with your opponent's hitbox because if it hits you get damage you get advantage but if it gets blocked you also get advantage and so in the case of Miguel he will do this his opponent blocks him whether in this uh, block animation he goes into savage stance leaning forward like this and then he can mix them up basically meaning that your opponent because they are in a recovery animation they cannot attack so they have to guess what Miguel is going to do next he can do something like you know uh, an attack like that like a high or maybe a better example he can do like a mid like that or maybe he's just going to do a low and so I need to try and predict what he's going to do next because I can't block either option but I can't interrupt either of the options and so that's what we call a mix-up in Tekken, basically. So you can create these mix-ups by applying a move that is plus on block. These moves are very powerful, very rare. Some characters don't even have access to any reliable ones that they can use. Uh, but example of char uh, characters who do are, uh, for example, Dragonov and Brian. You've got back one from Brian and you've got running two from Dragonov. If you know anything about those two characters, you know that they are considered two of the most powerful characters in the game and that those two attacks are considered two of the most uh, powerful uh, attacks in the entire game overall. So plus frames on block is a premium premium tool and you should really look up whether or not your character has access to it. But don't be... Uh, uh, discouraged if you find that your character actually doesn't because it's perfectly possible in this game to get by 
uh, without using moves that are plus unblock. And if you look at me play Miguel, it's actually one of the weaknesses of my Miguel. I don't really use this move all that much at all, but I'm able to get by fine either way. All right, that's going to uh, wrap up this um, discussion of applied frame data and block punishment. I hope it made sense and I hope you learned something. Uh, if you did, let me know. Uh, I think the next video is going to be another character tutorial. So if you have a specific character you want me to talk about, uh, let me know about that as well. But for now, thank you uh, so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you and bye bye.